Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of That's All Funny, episode number 561. We're having fun, aren't we? Uh, happy April Fools to all you who celebrate this <laughs> holiday. Uh, I'm not one for practical jokes anymore. I I don't know. I, I've always thought uh, they could go too far, you know? So uh, I've always just uh, avoided practical jokes. Unless it's like a whoopee cushion, you know, uh, something like that. That's pretty funny. Uh, whoopee cushion is always classic, making someone sound like they farted. It's always a good uh, classic joke there. Otherwise, you know, April Fool's is whatever. People take it, I guess it's just a prank, bro. It's just a prank. It's just a prank. Um, <clears throat> but I know the Bray Wyatt documentary came out. I'm probably going to watch that right now. It's two hours long. I was like, what the fuck? That's longer than what did I watch yesterday? Whiplash, uh, the movie Whiplash, and it was good. The ending was like not as happy as I thought it would be, or the, the ending was happier than I thought it would be. I'm sorry about that's what I meant. Um, but this uh, two hour long Bray Wyatt documentary, I'm like, god damn, I'll watch it though, you know, while like doing shit here. So we'll see. Uh, We'll see how that goes with the wrestler. But let's check out the news. That's what I want to, I guess, get into. So I, I'm, I'm, I don't have anything. Oh, here we go. Uh, China criticizes U.S. tightening of chip export rules. Uh, China has criticized the tightening of U.S. rules on semiconductor exports, saying they have created more hurdles to trade and more uncertainty to the chip in the chip industry. And, you know, yeah, I believe it. I feel... <laughs> Like, uh, fucking the U.S. is doing anything they can to slow China down because they're taking over everything. Like, they're, they're in everything, China. Like, everything's made in China. Everything's done by China. Uh, they're Chinese fucking, you know, people buying land here, Chinese organization. China's taking over. I, I know my, um, Niece got a little rabbit gift from Temu. Not from Temu, but someone bought it from Temu, right? That Chinese uh, export fucking dropship bullshit, you know, where you could buy a bunch of shit for like pennies. And they bought uh, Easter bunnies that are like little robotic ones that hop around. And I was like, oh shit, there's a Chinese satellite walking around my house now in the form of a tiny bunny that is uh listening in on our conversations you know which i don't really care if they listen in uh, they already have access to like my phone and stuff with tiktok but they're going to be hearing like my farts and me uh eating breakfast every morning the same old same old so yeah china um they just want information and i don't blame them information is king nowadays you know not christ so we'll see uh what the u.s does to uh tighten it even more even though china is going to get in anyways you know but staying on the topic of uh politics because you know we love politics here former top general warns of inevitable threats to us from isis after moscow attack um the islamic state terror group has a strong desire to attack the us and other foreign powers the former head of us central command warned on sunday calling it a threat that is only growing uh, we should believe them when they say that they're going to try to do it. Uh, told the ABC News coinker, I think it's a growing threat. I don't know, like the way he's setting it up like this, he's trying to just build up to the fact that oh, it was ISIS, they're gonna keep doing stuff like this. Uh, but it's very like oh, it, it rained over here, it's gonna keep raining, but then it might not rain. But if it does rain, I don't know, like the these are very vague answers, you know, especially if they did have intelligence uh, about that attack. Um, they didn't share it really publicly. They just showed shared it with like Moscow and Moscow was like, oh, well, you know, but I don't know. It's all politics. It's all um, I'm not even chess moves anymore. It's like checker moves just fucking with each other. So I believe things are done on purpose. And ISIS was created by what? George Bush? 
the Taliban was George Bush and ISIS was Obama, something like that. We're we're creating our own enemies, you know. We're very much like Tony Stark, uh, creating whatever enemy he created with the Stark weapons. It's the same thing. It's essentially the same thing. We're living in the first Iron Man movie. <sighs> Iron Man just dies at the very beginning instead of at the end, so we never get uh, the Avengers. We just get, uh, you know, Biden doing Biden stuff and Trump doing Trump stuff. <laughs> Did you see, uh, I saw on the news that uh, people were talking shit about, well, for one, they're talking shit about Biden because he declared, you know, Easter Trans Visibility Day, which is like, okay, that's that's really like, uh, narrowing your audience of Christians down by doing that, or Catholic or Christians or Christ believers, but then also you have Trump who uh, re re not even retweeted retruthed because he's on Truth Social a picture uh, like a video of Biden Biden a uh, a decal of him tied up in the back of a truck and everyone's like, well, you want the pr president of our United States to be hogtied and kidnapped in the back of a truck and it's like dude he just retruthed it like chill out you know but you know how the media is they're making uh uh mole, mountains out of molehills and um it distracts us from the fact that there are actual real problems going on you know and here's one of those real problems no it's not it's the news media saying this wrong beyonce fans are not happy that some cowboy carter songs were cut from cd and vinyl uh amid all the acclaim for beyonce's cowboy carter which i still haven't listened to i'm i'm lazy what did i do yesterday oh schoolwork i had schoolwork to do and then i was uploading episodes to rumble to see how that would do uh the same stuff you know just to rumble to see how it would do there so the free speech platform that is rumble and the allowances of what I can say and do. No, I'm just uploading there for the hell of it. Um, so yeah, there's key tracks missing from the CD, the compact disc, and vinyl form. Fans who pre ordered physical copies of Cowboy Carter are turning to social media and message boards like Reddit to complain that their albums are missing five tracks that were on the digital version. The album standout, Yah Yah, as well as Spaghetti. The Linda Martell Show, O Louisiana, and Flamenco are all excised from the vinyl version. Uh, the pre-ordered CD is also missing these first four songs, but includes Flamenco, uh, which spawned another complete the limited edition CD version, promised the inclusion of additional song, which many fans assumed it was unreleased, exclusive bonus track. Instead, the additional song appears just to be Flamenco, a track already on the digital version. Uh, it's funny that people are like complaining about this, feeling like they're getting gypped. Because, I mean, people have um, a lot of C well, I'll say a, a lot of CDs have done this before, but they've at least waited, you know. Like, I know the Chili Pepper, I I'm sure a lot of bands, but the only examples I can think of are the Chili Peppers right now because I just love the Chili Peppers, I listen to everything they do. Um, but they would release their CD versions, their vinyl versions. And then on iTunes, they had uh, iTunes like bonus versions with like two extra songs that weren't on the album or they were like singles that were only on the B-sides, you know? So Beyonce should have waited, I think. She should have released... That's and then to make even more money, that's what you should have done is like release these song, this album, just regular how it is, and then months down the road, let out an unreleased song, and then another unreleased song, and then another unreleased song to where oh shit, I gotta buy these other songs, they're unreleased or whatever, and buy them digitally, or even release uh, like singles of it, like. You know, one a CD, an extra CD, the the collector's complete edition, or whatever. I don't know what she did. This is just stupid on her part. She's just stupid. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think she did this wrong, and obviously people are gonna think they're getting screwed over. So that's pretty funny that she doesn't know how to 
release an album or run a business, even though she's done it so many times. Uh, so yeah, get it right, Beyonce. You're already uh, pissing off your fans. Uh, I'm sure Kamala Harris is angry that you screwed her over, but we'll see how uh, good good as gold her uh, brand is or her, her word is. But speaking of good as gold. Gold prices hit another record high after fresh U.S. data spurs Fed cuts expectations. Gold prices scaled to another record high Monday, propelled by U.S. interest rate expectations and the metal's appeal as a safe haven asset. Market watchers are expecting the U.S. Federal Reserve to cut rates in June. Um, I don't know. Like I, I get why the value of gold is going up as far as it being used as like uh, a tool. For you know electronics like don't you need gold for like semiconductors and you know a small electronics and all that bullshit but like gold as a currency i don't really understand why it's going up or people are like you know what i'm gonna liquidate all my assets in the gold uh i know like i used to have those gold plated pokemon cards and they've gone up in value just because of you know the retro uh market and people just wanting to buy their childhood again but i don't know about like owning gold that'd be pretty cool though to own like a gold bar like straight up just a gold bar um i i mean honestly i'd sell it <laughs> like the first thing i'd do is fucking sell it so if i just had one i'd sell it i, I wouldn't like sit there and stare at it like dude that's two thousand three thousand bucks or no, it says two thousand dollars per ounce. So a gold bar would probably be worth like a lot. Like, uh, like I don't even know how much. How much is a gold bar? Let me see. How much is a gold bar worth? So a gold bar could be worth seven hundred and eight thousand dollars seven hundred eight thousand eight hundred forty six dollars a gold bar yeah no i'd fucking sell a gold if i had a gold bar i would fucking sell it like yeah fuck that <laughs> i would sit on it like dang i own a gold bar cool like it's a fucking paperweight it's like no nah, i would sell that eight seven hundred eight thousand dollars dude that could easily pay my house off pay my truck off and let me chill uh, the podcast circuit for uh, a, a good couple of years while I heal. But yeah, um, I don't know. If you have a gold bar lying around, uh, sell it. It's worth worth a lot right now. Lastly, here on the news, exploring monogamy, Gwyneth Paltrow's stance on relationships and Polly Amori. And I was like, what? When I read this? In a recent Instagram Q&A session, actress and lifestyle entrepreneur Gwyneth Paltrow, uh, you know, the one from Iron Man 1, remember that callback because we were talking about Iron Man earlier in the episode, previously on this episode, the Iron Man, uh, she surprised her followers by revealing her preference, preference, she, <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow surprised followers by revealing her preference for monogamous relationships, despite her reputation progressive views on romance and marriage known for coining the term conscience conscious uncoupling during her divorce from ex-husband chris martin paltrow has open has been open about her approach to relationships however when asked about the possibility of engaging in a polyamorous relationship she firmly stated no thanks this declaration sheds lights on paltrow's personal beliefs and highlights the, the complexity of modern relationships in today's society uh i don't know about all that like Okay, dude, you can hmm, how do I put this? You can have you know like progressive ideas if that's what you want to call them. The the ideas now that are more new or fresh or current, but still hold on to traditional values. And again, like now we call those traditional values, but they're just what we were brought up with or what was normal, uh in in the sense of normal not even being uh uh, the best word to describe it but like if a person wants to be with one person that's cool right 
if two people want to be with one person or vice versa, or three people want to be together, as long as they're not hurting anyone and they're all in agreement, I don't see the big deal with it. Like, you know, uh, I always go back to, well, for one, I, I had like, I, I still do. I was the biggest crush on my cousin, right? And, of course, that's frowned upon, <laughs> like, kind of, you know, in society, right? And, uh, you know, for a while we were something, uh, I'll say. Like, it wasn't, was it going to last, like, forever? No, of course not. But uh, it's because of society. I, I like to blame society, but then again, I could blame myself for, you know, being a fat piece of shit uh, dude, right? But um i'll say like i always go back to i had a sociology class i've told the story before a social sociology class you know where it's about the study of human behaviors and all that and the teacher brought up like a point where he's like uh if if two bro if a brother and sister uh, once a year would go to like a private home like uh, a, a home in the woods right and they would have sex with each other and not tell anyone but then come back out of the home feeling better every year that they did it and feeling good about themselves is it bad and of course everyone's like oh yeah that's terrible uh, uh. and he's like but is it and <laughs> of course after saying that everyone's all like oh no no but here i am like you know with my my whole stance on my cousin and stuff and it's like what are they who are they hurting like if they're doing it if they do it like obviously privately where no one knows but it makes them better people you know so why uh, why is it a bad thing for society if it doesn't even affect them but it actually makes the people that are within it better, you know? And that's what I always thought about these, like even the things going on right now with the trans gender community and the LBGTQ and, you know, any, any sort of thing that doesn't affect me, like, why does it matter to me if it doesn't affect me, but it makes people better, you know, that's the same with religion, right? Like, I don't care if you believe in whatever God you believe in. If you're a better person for it, all for you. You know what I mean? If it makes you like a shitty person or makes makes you hate, you know, makes you worse on the world, then yeah, I would say we might have an issue with it. But then again, if it doesn't affect me, why should it matter to me, right? Um, but I don't know. All, all I can say like on that is, yeah, like why do we care so much about what other people do or other people care if it's not hurting anyone, you know? And, um, th there are some issues right now, of course, like the hot button issues about DEI or, uh, white supremacy or, uh, the transgender or, uh, politics that actually like affect everyone, you know, like, whenever you kind of break it down and think about it uh so yeah that that i might take issue with but otherwise if you're like let's say you're a, uh, a man who dresses up in a dress at home and does it in front of yourself in the mirror and it makes you feel pretty for a day and then you like go you know like the whole drag queen thing like cool like if that makes you a better person makes you feel better uh, of course, it gets along the line when it's affecting like children around you and, uh, you know, their, their values or their parents values. But again, if they all they're all in agree with, agreement with it, it, it doesn't matter. But uh, I don't know. There's this is just trying to distract us from real issues like the wars that the people are causing and stuff like that, you know. Uh, but yeah, people are allowed to do whatever they want. That's uh, what I'm trying to say, as long as it doesn't hurt anyone. And that's a good motto to end on.
Uh, also, what's a good motto to end on is that's all funny, guys. I want to thank you for listening to the podcast. Uh, it's a real funny little podcast. Group. That's all funny. Funny, check that out. Uh, that's all kayfabe anywhere podcasts are available. Uh, just search that's all kayfabe. If you want to see both versions, uh, video versions of the podcast, check out the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at Lorenzo Ariola. Like and subscribe there or share it, it'd be helpful to the algorithm and all that stuff. Uh, if you want to support the podcast even more, check out the Patreon, patreon.com slash Lorenzo Ariola. Five dollars a month gets you everything. Early episodes, bonus episodes, after episodes, blah, blah, blah. Uh, also, I didn't mention I have a live show I do with the great Edmund Salad called Titan Ariolas. It's on Tuesdays, 8 o'clock p.m. Central, 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern. Uh, talk about a movie, play a game. It's a lot of fun. Check out the website, www.retrohorrorinc.com for t-shirts, print stickers. If you want a commission from great art from a great artist, at Retro Horror Inc. on Instagram, at Retro Horror Inc. on Twitter. Uh, Bret Hart of Graphic Art, check it out. I'm at Lorenzo Ariola on Instagram, at Lorenzo Ariola on Twitter. Thank you to my Patreon subscribers. Everyone else, I can subscribe. Take care. Bye.